friends, my name is Deerat Singh and this is a demo lecture for PCOT. Today we are going to start with a very beautiful topic. This topic belongs to a chapter of your paper one chemistry known as structure of atom. Now in structure of atom, the basic fundamental thing which we studied was how and when your main fundamental particles of atom was discovered what was its properties, and how do they behave in different circumstances. Now, what we are going to do is, we are going to study something called as quantum numbers. Now, the moment I say the word quantum, you know, people get scared. Is it some rocket science? Is it an Einstein concept? Not at all, students. It is a very easy topic, a very interesting topic, and believe me, you all will nail it. Now, before we start with this particular topic, let us understand some basic principle with respect to your atomic structure. Now, we all know atom contains a nucleus and the orbits which contain electrons. Now, in nucleus, we have two main fundamental particles, that is protons, which is positively charged, and neutrons, which is devoid of any charges. Similarly, the electrons, which is revolving around the nucleus, is negatively charged. So what happens is this positively charged proton, which is present inside your nucleus, completely balances the charge with respect to the electrons, which is revolving around the nucleus. And that's the reason why the atom is neutral in charge. Whenever a particular atom gains a positive charge or a negative charge, we call that particular species as ions. If it is positively charged, we call it as cation. If it is negatively charged, we call it as anion. But that is not something we are interested in right now. What we are interested in is to know what is exactly this quantum numbers. So ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, let us begin with our topic. I will share the whiteboard so that we can write it down over there. And then we will understand what is basically this quantum. Just give me a moment. Okay. Now we all know electrons revolves around the nucleus of an atom. But if we have to explain that particular thing, where exactly that electron is present, which orbit it is present, how far from nucleus it is present. So basically, if we want to ask you what's the address of an electron, that particular thing is given by quantum numbers. So what is quantum number? Basically, it's an address of an electron. Just like we people have our addresses. We live in a particular apartment, in a particular building, or a society, on some street, in a particular city. Similarly, the same thing goes for your electrons. They also reside somewhere in your atom. See, it is pretty much easy to understand where your proton is and where your neutron is because they are present in nucleus. So it's not a big task to understand what is their address, but ultimately it is a big deal to understand where is your electron. And to give an idea of where our electron resides, we go to quantum numbers. Now, there are four types of quantum numbers. The first one is principal quantum number. Generally, we call this as the main quantum number. Principle means the main, important one. Then second one, we have azimuthal quantum number. Third, we have magnetic quantum number. And lastly, we have spin quantum number. So ideally, there are four types of quantum numbers. Principle, azimuthal, magnetic and spin. So we'll go in this order itself. So the first we'll study what is principal followed by azimuthal followed by magnetic and lastly we'll study what is the spin quantum number. To start with your principal quantum number or also known as something which gives the brief idea about the main quantum number. And the principal quantum number is something which tells us about the um, main shell of an electron. Now we all know if we talk of an atom, it has nucleus and surrounded by various orbits. These orbits are denoted by principal quantum number. I'm using initials 
principal quantum number PQ. So let us see if my electron is present over here. So this is the first order. So my principal quantum number will be one. Or if it is present over here, I will say my principal quantum number is two. If you can recollect back in your school days, Bacharo, you know, we had this something known as KLM and shells. These are nothing but your principal quantum numbers. So you already know this thing. Just we are going a step further and giving them proper scientific names. You know, you have grown up now. So 10 standard, simple uh, terminologies. But when you come to 11 standard, when you go to 12 standard, we have to increase our understanding. We have to increase the way we talk about the scientific uh, concepts. So principal quantum number is a particular shell or the main shell in which your electron resides. Now, this shell is further subdivided into subshells or orbitals. So the first shell may be subdivided, second shell may be further subdivided. And that is known as azimuthal quantum number. We call it as azimuthal quantum numbers. So what is this division? So the shells are further classified into S, P, T, F orbitals. So you have S orbital, you have P orbital, you have D orbital, you have F orbital. This classification of the main shell into subshell is given by or denoted by azimuthal quantum. Now further, the next quantum number which we are talking about is magnetic quantum number. Now what, what does magnetic quantum number do? The magnetic quantum number gives us an idea how many compartments are present in each subshell, which means these subshells are further divided. They are further divided. Now, depending upon number of compartments, which gives an idea about magnetic quantum numbers. So S subshell has only one compartment. P subshell has three compartments. D subshell has five compartments. And F subshell has seven compartments. Now, what is the requirement of this compartment? Why do we need to understand this compartment? Guys, this compartment, each compartment contains two electrons. So what idea do we get from magnetic quantum numbers? That the S subshell at max can accommodate how many electrons? It can accommodate two electrons. What about your P subshell? Since it contains three compartments, each compartment two electrons. So P subshell will have six electrons. What about D? 10 electrons. And what about F? 14 electrons. Now, this becomes very important when it comes to off bore principle, when you want to write an electronic configuration. At that time, when you're writing the configuration, SPDF orbitals or subshell plays an important role. And that is why we need to understand this quantum numbers very specifically. Okay. We got to know what is principal quantum number. It is main shell. We got to know what is azimuthal quantum number. It is subshell. We got to know what is magnetic quantum number. It is the compartment present in each subshell. The last we come to spin quantum numbers. Now, what is spin quantum number? Just now I said that um, each compartment contains two electrons. So, for example, the subshell which contains three compartments. Now, electrons are present in opposite directions in each compartment, clockwise and anticlockwise. Spin quantum number gives us an idea what is the position of particular electron, whether it is rotating, revolving clockwise or anticlockwise. And accordingly, we do this kind of. So if there is an upward arrow, it means your electron is moving in clockwise direction. If it is a downward arrow, it means your electron is moving in anticlockwise direction. Now, this also plays a very important role. This is responsible for magnetic properties. That we'll study some other time. But how does your electrons are placed in the compartments? That decide whether your atom or molecule will, will be paramagnetic or diamagnetic or ferromagnetic. It all depends upon spin quantum numbers. So students, this was four different types of quantum numbers. Principal quantum number, azimuthal quantum number, magnetic quantum number and spin quantum number. I hope so. This was quite a topic to understand. When we meet next time, 
we'll start with some other topic. Till then, bye-bye and take care. And once again, this is a demo lecture for Peapot. Thank you.